episode of Happily Here and Now. With me today is Christian Stanley, one of our new select board members. So I want to thank you very much for coming and agreeing to this interview process. New for me and yeah. new for you. <laughs> yes, yeah. Well, thank you for having me. Um, you know, as you know, the folks behind Hadley Media are really interested in producing more content that's of local interest. And so um, we're really local now, mm -hmm. talking about, about town government. And I also want to thank you for running for select board. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm involved with the League of Women Voters, and one of their um, slogans is, democracy is not a spectator sport. And mm -hmm. so thanks for participating. Yeah, well, thank <laughs> you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we'll start with um, what prompted you to, to run for select board. Uh, yeah, I mean, I had been thinking about getting involved with local politics kind of casually, thinking, you know, like, oh, I'd like to do that someday. And then at my son's birthday party, a member of the school committee was there. And <clears throat> I just got talking to her a little bit more about what it was like on the school committee and what prompted her to do it. And uh, she was like, you should just meet with Molly or someone on the select board and look into it. It's, you know, you can do it. Like, it's not that bad. Uh, so that really, I would say, kind of set it off. And I, you know, got together with Molly, had a coffee, and talked to her a little bit about what you do on the select board and what it is involved, and just took the gamble, like, hey, it won't hurt if I just get the signatures and, and go for it. So I think I just kind of had an interest and just went for it, more or less, and went into it feet first and didn't really think about it. Uh, you know, overanalyze it too much. I was very excited to do it and, and go for it. And how, how long had you been a resident in Hadley? I mean, I've lived in Hadley since 2009. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I have to think when my daughter was born. She was born in 2009. So, uh, yeah, 2009 I became a resident. And I've been to town meetings and those kind of things, but I don't think I really realized how town government worked mm -hmm. until I really got into being on the select board. And so you've been on the select board for seven, yeah, eight months since now? Since April, so eight yes. months, yeah. And how's it been? What it's been good. You know, I would say it's definitely a learning process, um, just not knowing necessarily how to navigate all of the issues, uh, you know, whether it comes just to open meeting law and what's involved with working with other members on the select board, what you can kind of take on your own and advocate for as an individual member. Um, so I, I'm just really learning a lot about what you can do as a select board member and how to be effective and how to change things if there's change needed and how to you know keep things going if they're working. Um, and, so, and so as you're doing that learning, what's, what surprised you? What's been the most surprising? Uh, the most surprising thing, um, I think the most surprising thing is just how we need more people to be involved and how a lot of town government is a generation or two ahead of me and how there aren't necessarily people my age and younger involved in a lot of the government boards and that kind of thing. I would say school committee is probably the closest to my age group, but then once you get outside of that, um, you know, it's a lot of, not older folks, I don't want to call them old, but it's just like, you know, generations beyond me and, and just different point of view of the world. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the great things about being on government and that I like about it is that you are interacting with people of all different political persuasions and backgrounds and age groups and it's kind of this melting pot where we can all get together and try to come to consensus on issues and move forward. Yeah, a few a few months ago I met someone who'd been involved in his city government for you know, 25 or 30 years yeah. and he said um, people think about town government like they think about car maintenance, which is yeah. to say that they don't think about it yeah. until yeah. it's broken. Yeah. And so trying to educate people about what to do to keep it working well is it's hard. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what's surprised you most? Um, what are some of the challenges that you face? Challenges, I would say, are definitely getting getting used to the um, meeting format, the open meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, just coming from a background of private you know, business, whether it's 
working for someone or my own business, I think that having that open meeting constraints of uh, trying to discuss things with people is just a completely different format that I'm used to working in where in other areas it's easy to make decisions, you can call people, talk to them very easily, try to build consensus, you know, one-on-one -on -one in different areas. That is possible somewhat with the open meeting laws, but I think it's key in government to have those transparent discussions. Wait, so and are there restrictions about how much you can talk to the other elected members of the board? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, to a certain degree, you could have a conversation, but you get these fine lines where if you talk to everybody on the board to get consensus on one issue, and so you go into the meeting half knowing you have the consensus on the issue before it's discussed, that can theoretically be a violation of the open meeting law. So it's just a little challenging to navigate all those. And I could be completely wrong with what I'm saying, but it's just, that's one of the challenges is trying to find out where that line is and where the gray areas are and what's okay and what's not okay. Wait, so, so is the point of the open meeting law so that all of that decision-making, um, what I think of as behind the scenes in yeah. government, I mean, that's I, my understanding is that how politics works all the time, yeah. but is it to make it more transparent? It's to make it more transparent, and on that local level, you're supposed to go into those meetings with an open mind and deliberate, um, and not really have your mind made up until you're actually discussing it in the open meeting. Um, that at least is the intent. Of and how often do you think that is really the case? I mean, I think, I mean, I try to have that perspective. Is um, I might have a discussion with someone uh, on the phone and try to talk through it a little bit, but try not to, you know, get consensus so that right, so we you know what we're going into the meeting. Right, so you get an agenda in advance, yeah, and yeah. you know what the topics you're going to talk about. Yeah. And so if you have a question about something that's on the agenda, you can't ask someone till, until the meeting, or? Oh, well, if there, there was some clarification on the agenda, you could ask, is there more information regarding this? But yeah, I would say you can, and the same thing with emails, we can't necessarily say, I feel this way over an email. You mm -hmm. could say, here is information regarding this issue, mm -hmm. but you can't say, this is my opinion on the issue and how I think we should do it. So theoretically, yeah. all the members of the select board are learning how each other feel about a certain issue on the yeah. meeting night. Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah. That's that's hard. That means yeah. things move pretty slow. Can move pretty slowly. Yeah, especially a meeting, you know, two or three times a month. You know, right. that can. But but at the same time, we can. That's where you can kind of have your own departments or issues that you're working on, and then you're bringing to the select board to present up. And so mm -hmm. like. I'm a liaison for, let's say, the senior center construction, because that's a big one. So it's not like nothing is happening until those meetings, but if we have a new, you know, we recently had to redesign the senior center, redo the construction documentation, so that needed new approval of purchase orders and that kind of thing. So, you know, we, we didn't have to just, that was all in the works. And then we get to the select board meeting, the select board votes on approving that contract, mm -hmm. and then we move forward. So it's a ba it's in balance. Mm -hmm. and, and so that's where the challenge is. So you, and there's only one liaison. You're the, the one liaison from the select board to the senior city center yep. committee. Yep. And how many of those, how many other um, interests, not interests, but assignments do you have? Uh, yes, yeah, so my, I am, <laughs> gotta get this right. Uh, the senior center building committee, and then the schools. Um, and I'm trying to think if there's anything. Wait, so the liaison to the school committee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that means that in between select board meetings, you might meet with the school board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or you might meet with the senior center co yes, committee. Yes, yes. And then bring that information to a select yep. board meeting and tell people what you've learned. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, so there's a lot more time involved in being a select board member oh, than just your Wednesday night. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. And there's a lot of, yeah, just like I say, you might be working with one other member of the select board on a particular issue. Because if there's two of you working on it, that's not 
that's not necessarily a majority, right? The problem is having a majority going into the meeting um, with consensus. Uh, so if you're working on something with someone else, uh, you can have a discussion and talk about things. Right, so you mean that's a problem in terms of open meeting law? In terms of open meeting, and, and I'm just saying, outside of the select board meetings, we can work together some to work on projects like Molly is the liaison for the library committee. So if there's anything between the senior center and the library, we can kind of talk about it before the meeting to kind of get a feel for where our committees are and what directions we're going in, mm -hmm. and then bring that information to the select board meeting if it needs that level of discussion. Right, so now I'm understanding why, um, you know, several years ago our select board went from a three-member yeah. committee to a five-member. It seems like that was a really important decision. Yeah. Because you want to be able to communicate with other members. A little bit, yeah, yeah, yeah. And if there's only three and you talk to one other, you're... You're in violation. You're, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's really interesting. That's really interesting. Yeah. Um, so what's been the best thing that, about being a member? The best thing, I would say, is, uh, well, just, you know, reactions from people, of course, when you can make a difference, uh, whether it's, like, like with the senior center building, you know, just seeing that progression moving forward, that's really rewarding to see it, it moving, or just when I can help somebody within the town uh, government with an issue or address a problem and... They feel heard and um, you know feel like somebody's looking out for them and what their feelings are and that that's really great too. So and also just getting together with the community and talking about these issues. I think it's really special to be in these different board meetings and committee meetings at night. You know, usually they're at night and it's a group of people volunteering their time to make a difference in their community and I think that's really special and. Uh, I find that really rewarding to be part of that and, you know, see those people out there. So you've met a lot more people in town. You've met a people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A wider, do you feel like it's, you know, a cross-section of the town? Do you think it's, um, you know, like, the, I wonder sometimes about the people who get involved. Like what yeah. I would say a lot of people that are involved are people that have lived in town for a while. Um, and I haven't interacted with all committees. I know... And in certain committees, you can pick out that have uh, a lot of you know longer-term residents involved in them, and then there's certain committees where there's more uh, like newer residents in them. So it just really depends mm -hmm. um, on those those things, and I, I can't quite get the rhyme or reason to it, but right. it just depends. Well, I know, in you know, part of my work with the um, Hadley Media Oversight mm -hmm. Committee. That we, we are often questioning and wondering how do we get more people involved? How do we draw yeah. more people in? And I think sometimes the nighttime meetings are hard and yeah. you know, for people to get to, which is filming them at night and, and oh, televising yeah. them is really important. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, it's people have busy lives, and work, families, yeah. you know, yeah. personal it's, issues. It's really it's it's. Yeah, it's, it can be inconvenient at times, and with, uh, I know the Senior Center Building Committee tends to meet during the day, whether it's in the morning or the afternoon, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, a lot of the committees are meeting at night, and... Um, and you have flexibility with your day job that lets you attend those yeah. meetings, because you work... Yeah, I have my own business, so I can just say I'm leaving for an hour or whatever, and it's, yeah, it's not, I don't have to drive a half hour to get here, but uh, I mean... You know, another select board member, David Phil, might do this as well. You know, he, his job involves a lot of travel, but he just has scheduled his time so that he can make the select board meetings and be in, as involved as he can. And, and he managed to hire a new DPW director with a kind of crazy travel schedule. So it is possible. It yeah, is possible. It is possible. Yeah. So what's been the hardest thing? Um, your least favorite thing of being a member of the select board? Least favorite thing. Uh, I think, well, the hardest thing is just kind of being on display uh, mm -hmm. at various times, whether it's, you know, being recorded at the meetings and having that, un that I don't want to say uncertainty, but just, you know, being watched and not being sure who's watching and what you're saying. And if it's right, you know, that's always tricky. Mm -hmm. And then just being in front of a town meeting um, and, you know, hoping that 
you're conveying the right information to people and all that's accurate. You know, I don't know every nut and bolt in town, so rely on David Nixon and um, other people throughout the whole town for information, especially when it comes to capital issues and all kinds of different um, things that I might not necessarily, I don't have my hand on it every day, and so you're up there speaking on things that you're trusting other people's information to be up there and hoping you're not making any mistakes. Mm-hmm. I would say that's that's one hard area for me. Right, so if I'm hearing you correctly, there's a lot, there's an initial level, at least of self-consciousness of being yeah. some, but is it lessening as you go? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Mm-hmm. I know that um, when I did my, uh, was running for my campaign, I did a campaign a five minute campaign speech with Hadley Media and that was one of the hardest things because you're just talking right into the camera yes. and nobody else is in the room and you're not having a discussion and that was challenging but I think uh, the way I've dealt with it is just feeling like it is what it is and mm-hmm. I'm trying to speak the best I can and everybody makes mistakes so mm-hmm. once in a while you make a mistake and hopefully it's not that bad you know right. but, I mean I think it is a special person who can learn in front of others, right? Yeah. People come to you like, you're the select board member, I can ask you this question, yeah. and yet you're learning, yeah. you sort of have to say, well, let's figure that out yeah, together, yeah, exactly. right? Yeah. Um, so w- would you recommend this? Would you recommend running for a public office? Yeah, I would really recommend it. I mean, I think that, um, you know, we all, I, we all have busy lives and uh, things going on. I think that, you know, I. I've never been like a sports coach or anything along those lines. I think, you know, we can all find places to volunteer in our community, and I feel like this role on the select board is really well suited for me um, and kind of what I enjoy doing. And so, anybody else that's looking for something, some way, you know, in our political climate today, I think that regardless of what side of the aisle you're on, you can feel the need for being called to do something and, and try to do something. and you don't have to run for, you know, congressman or senator to make a difference. And mm-hmm. just people running in their local communities can make a really big difference to that town. And it's amazing how much impact you have on your community. Like you said, you don't think about your car maintenance until something's broken. And on the select board, we're looking at tax rates and water and sewer rates and, you know, planning for the future of the town. What way is this town headed um, mm-hmm. that, all gets determined by the people that are volunteering and running for these boards and committees. Right, because so. there, there are many more positions than are elected, than elected positions. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. When I look through the, um, that has the yearly annual report, and I see all those committees yeah. that need volunteers that, that might meet once or twice a month, mm-hmm. um, and are people who really are in the same you know boat, like, actually, I want to be involved, but I don't really know until you have to start someplace. Yeah, and, and yeah, I mean, there's yeah, everything from, you know, the Cultural Commission, uh, you know, to the Planning Board, to the Select Board. I mean, there's so many different uh, boards and committees. And right, so some are elected and some are finance committee. I mean, you can just write a letter wanting to, and it does not have to be a complex letter. I want to run, I want to you know, volunteer to be on the finance committee. You can just send a letter to town hall saying that. Right, but, I mean, perhaps the thing that stops people from doing that is that they don't understand finance, or they don't understand how town finance works. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of the shows I'd love love to be able to do is um, sort of like a town finance one-on-one. Yeah. You know, people always want to complain about taxes, and yet taxes are what pay for our schools and pay for our roads and bridges Mm -hmm. and and pay the salaries of the people who work for the town. Yeah. So, um, and so, are there are there committees or commissions that are really needing volunteers? Like, can you can do a little ad now? Oh, I'm <laughs> oh, putting on the spot. I don't know off the top of my head. I know that on the web, you know, on HadleyMA.org, mm-hmm. uh, there is a list of open positions available. Um, that don't require anybody to to run for office. You yeah, can just yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, we are uh, on the select board. We. Uh, you know, we, I don't know what's the word, not, not know if, but uh, we uh, sign off on people going to various committees, and yeah, people are joining all, you know, occasionally, 
not all the time, but occasionally, you know, we'll get a new library trustee or um, somebody new that wants to be on the municipal building committee or uh, whatever it might be. So, uh, are there committees that have too many people interested in them? I don't think so. Okay, so that's actually good to know. So yeah. if you have an interest in in almost any part of town government, you can find usually a place there to is space. Yeah, yeah. and uh, you know everybody has something to say that can be valuable. And I feel like there are certain like planning board. It does require a, some knowledge of the um, town bylaws, mm -hmm. but at the same time, uh, just being on there to have a voice in town that might have a different perspective than other people on that committee. You don't need to know the bylaws, you know, off the top of your head to be on that committee. Somebody needs to know them and be able to review them, and we do have to build things according to the bylaws, but also having fresh perspectives and those kind of things on all our boards and committees can be good. Yeah, I often think the most important um, some of it, sometimes the most important role in a committee is the person who listens really well yeah. and asks good questions, or any questions even, but just says, wait, do we need to, do we need to rush this decision? Do we, do yeah. we see more time? Do we know everything we need to know, or have we looked at it from all the different perspectives? And maybe that's impossible yeah. to do, and there needs to be some level of, let's move this along, but mm -hmm. I think listening and Asking questions is an underrated skill. Yes, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Asking good questions is a great skill to have. Mm -hmm. So, is there something you've learned um, that you didn't know before being on the select board about the town of Hadley? Uh, so much. Uh, I, I think the biggest thing is I feel like the town's at a bit of a inflection point or you know crossroads as far as where we can go with things. I mean. Uh, you know, we have a lot of needs in town. You know, we have historic buildings that need rebuilt. We have, let's just say, like the DPW needs, uh, you know, a building uh, to at least house their offices or replacement of their trailers. Uh, so, and the school, you know, schools and school funding. There's a lot. <laughs> there's so many issues that need addressed, and really uh, trying to. Def figure out well, where are we going as a town, I feel like is something critical at this point. Um, and I forget your exact question. Well, I'm answering right, what you learned about what you learned Oh, what I learned, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, that, that learning is just how much need there is in the town for kind of, not a revival, revitalization, but just there are a lot of things that are needing to go in, diff in directions and what we want to focus on and prioritize and those different things. And as well, you know, we have to think about um, uh, planning for the future and what kind of staff do we want to have on in the town. Like right now we're trying, we're discussing hiring maybe a human resources manager uh, to put into town government. That would be a new position to kind of manage human resources in the town because of all the things now we're confronted with on that level that we don't necessarily have at the town level, an official role at the town level to address human resources issues. So, um, so there's all what kinds are, of What things. are the human resources issues like? Benefits? Yeah, and benefits, um, sick hiring, um, practices, contracts, um, just all kinds of, I, I think about um, just uh, planning for staff in the future as people want to retire and age out of the, the roles they've been in for a long time or losing a lot of institutional knowledge and how do we keep that moving forward mm -hmm. and find good staff moving forward and that kind of thing that can kind of keep the town operating at a, a level like it is now. Right, so, well, I mean, I, I know very little about town yeah. um, finance and town government, but, you know, I guess I think of it as anybody would, uh, even a household budget, like there, there may be this huge list of things you want to be able yeah. to do, yeah. and yet you have this, amount of money that you have to spread and so you're trying to do things as efficiently yeah as inexpensively as possible and then sometimes doing it inexpensively isn't inexpensive in the long run yeah yeah, right? yeah like yeah. delaying building maintenance for instance yes yeah um yeah uh, you, you just look at cost escalation of things and one reason why we just kind of made the two senior center and library projects more parallel path as opposed to in series is because 
the escalation cost of delaying the library project is, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars by waiting another year to build it. And so can um, there be a single clerk of the works for both? For we're looking at doing that, right? That's still in research. Uh, municipal building committee is thinking about it and going to make a recommendation to the select board about what we want to do regarding that position. But we, we are looking at having somebody that can kind of coordinate the projects and coordinate moving and different things that uh, yeah, it seems like it's, it's, it's outside of town staff. There are members of town staff that are interested in doing certain portions, but they also have a whole other job to do. So balancing all that um, and having somebody that can make decisions, because again, as a select board, we can only make them so quickly and we are volunteer positions, so we can't work another 20 hours a week, one person to try to coordinate all this stuff, so. And so if you hire someone like a clerk of the work, so mm -hmm. they're, make, they're on the job full time, and they're it making decisions. Probably would be part time, mm -hmm. we think. Um, but, and we don't know for how long, you know, it's, it's really tricky to figure it all out, so, and that's why we're looking. And this is another area where people can volunteer for the town is, when issues like this come up, you know, having people work on committees for special projects, like, oh, we need a recommendation for a clerk of the works. So what do we, how do we navigate that? We've done this with the ambulance. Right. When we did the ambulance, there was a special committee to come up with a recommendation what we should do regarding an ambulance. For and so just regular town, heavy, heavy residents got together and researched ambulances and, and costs. Yeah, and, and people, and you know, people that live in Hadley have a lot of experience. So there were people that had been on ambulances and different things in the past. Of course, they don't know anyone, everyone personally on that committee, but they came with experience that was relevant to the task mm -hmm. and, and put in valuable input. Um, to, to help us make that decision. And so there's a group of people right now who are researching this idea of the clerk of the works. The municipal building committee oh, is coming up with a recommendation, okay. yeah. And there, but and I'm just saying that's an example of another area when these things come up, um, whether it be human resources or finance or, or IT person in a town, like there is a need to have some committees to help with a recommendation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people who have done some research and yeah, both yeah. sides. And because, again, yeah, it's tough. Uh, it's tough to, like you were saying before, that meetings are about hours. The time you have in a day is a volunteer position. So, you know, we can't necessarily do everything on the select board. I think sometimes you can do as much as you can do. And, you know, you do have to set that line how much you're willing to take on. Because, like anything, you know, the job will take as much out of you as you can get and mm -hmm. you know you do have to have your boundaries but I mean it's, it's good to do as much as you can I'm not saying to just sit back and not do anything but are you getting more emails and phone calls than you got before? I, it's funny no I don't get too many no yeah yeah occasionally but not too many so even with all that was, has been going on here people aren't calling at all hours of the night and saying do something about this. not me I know other members of the select board yes but um, not me personally so hmm. yeah Interesting. Yeah, Interesting. not that I should advertise that. <laughs> <laughs> now you're going to get a yeah, lot of phone yeah, calls. Yeah. Um, so what, what have your past experiences been that prepared you for this role? Yeah, um, I mean, you know, I, I have a professional engineer's license, so I uh, had worked in mechanical engineering consulting and project management for a number of years, and now I own my own business, so kind of understand some project management and... Um, people management skills and uh, just an interest in finance and budgets and those kind of things as well. Uh, for my own business, kind of, oh, well, that can apply to the town somewhat too, but it is different in the town, I would say, for sure. You know, you were mentioning uh, municipal finance, and that is an area I'm still worrying about too because there's a lot of nuance to that. So, Right, I think, I think maybe people who are new to government, and especially um, democracy, mm -hmm. sometimes think, oh, if you just ran the town like a good, efficient yeah. business, things would be better. But there are some constraints as, we're, as oh, yeah. you're learning, right? You can't run it like a business. Yeah, yes and no. I mean, the fundamental skills are the same, but there's a lot, or fundamental principles are the same, but it's, there are a lot of different things. I mean, private businesses don't have to, OPEB and all these different things that What's OPEB? Uh, 
other post-employment benefits. And that's like health insurance and different things after you retire and we have to have a certain amount of funds um, built up to pay those expenses. And Hadley's in a really good position, I would say, as far as paying that. Some towns don't even bother with it. Um, so it's that's a whole long story. Wait, but it, it, it's uh, Brennan, I don't know anything about yeah, it. Yeah, well, okay, so yeah, there is something. Uh, I'll just do that because it's a whole nother discussion. But and it's something that you are just learning about as well. I learned about it earlier on in my um, you know, education of becoming on the select board and looking at the budget and wow, what is this huge line item for? So then I'm, I was just using that as an example of something that is required by the town to pay you know, because of legislation at the state level, mm -hmm. um, but isn't necessarily something you would think in your budget that you have to pay. It's kind of like a forced retirement savings plan mm -hmm. uh, that is just coming out of your... your and so, and so pe legislators at the state level have said this is what all municipalities in Massachusetts have yeah. to do, mm -hmm. and, but some municipalities are not doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they get caught off guard, or they get caught... I don't know what happens. I don't know what happens. But I, it's when you go to these mass and municipal association events, you know, that, that can be a topic of conversation because of towns' different approaches to it. Mm -hmm. So, well, yeah, anyway. <laughs> it sounds like there's, we have a lot to learn about yeah. how our, even our little town of Hadley, how our town government works. Mm -hmm. and, uh, maybe you'll come on again and we'll talk about OPEB or <laughs> some other. I don't know if I'd be the best person to talk about it, but yeah. But yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll have you again. And, and, um, or if there's any ever, any other issue that you think would benefit from yeah. you know, uh, people knowing about, yeah. they'll yeah. have you come again. Yeah, and getting the word out there is a really challenging thing. So you know, this is one more way to get the word out there about things and maybe us different things that we're doing in on a select board come up. If we need people for certain issues, can do something to talk about what we're considering and maybe there's people out there that are interested in volunteering their time to work on a particular project or who knows what. Well, thanks yeah. again. Well, thanks thank again you, for coming yeah. and thanks for watching Hadley Here and Now and we'll see you another time.